visit to Edinburgh in the 18th century was a visit to a city at the very centre of the discussions, the debates, the insights, the inspiration that we take for granted today as laying the foundations for the modern world. Every August for the last 63 years, this city has literally exploded into activity, into action and into creativity as a result of the wonderful Edinburgh International Festival. The original inspiration behind the Scottish Government's decision to designate 2009 the Year of Homecoming was the 250th anniversary of the birth of Robert Burns. Perhaps there is no more poignant story that tells the tale of homecoming and what it is to have or to lose a home than our opening opera at the Festival Theatre this year. St Kilda, the island of the Birdmen, is a poignant and tragic story set on the island of St Kilda, the most western of all of the islands of Scotland. It's a story about how in 1930, people had to be removed from that island because it could no longer sustain human habitation. Think also of Diaspora, a new collaboration between the Singapore Chinese Orchestra, Theatre Works Singapore and director Ong Keng Sen. And in his very lateral way, Keng Sen is still talking about the essence of diaspora, of searching for belonging, of searching for homeland, of searching for identity, but in a completely different way to what we in Scotland expect and understand by diaspora itself. Consider also some other journeys about homecoming. The epic journey of Ulysses and his return to his homeland, created as an opera by Monteverdi in the early 17th century, and invented as a rather glamorous spoof uh, by Christian Spuck as part of a new choreography from the Royal Ballet of Flanders. Monteverdi's opera is performed by the Richard Carr Consort, Hans Bring Puppet Company from South Africa in a production directed by William Kentridge. The 2009 Edinburgh International Festival celebrates a number of significant anniversaries the 350th anniversary for Purcell, 250th anniversary of the death of Handel, the 200th anniversary of the death of Haydn, and the 200th anniversary of the birth of Mendelssohn. Taken together, these four extraordinary composers tell a really interesting story about the development, origins, and the liveliness of British music to this day. Our opening concert, an oratorio by Handel called Judas Maccabeus was really very difficult to perform in Scotland for over a hundred years because it was Handel's tribute to the butcher of Culloden, the hated Duke of Cumberland. The Göttingen Festival with Nicholas McGeegan present Asus and Galatea in concert at the Usher Hall and a fully staged production, a new production of Admeto to be directed by Doris Dury, one of Germany's greatest television, film and theatre directors. Voltaire's farce Candide, or to give it its full title, Candide or Optimism, is the basis of a wonderful new production from Malthouse Melbourne, which carries a really important warning. Optimism, as this production will be called, is set in Australia in the backyard ferality of an Australian city. And I guess what we're saying by this production is, if you really want utopia, if you're really searching for paradise, be very, very careful what you wish for. The other great philosophical discussion that occurred in the 18th century is the pact between rational thought and suspicion. The pact between Mephistopheles and Faust. All of this, all of this drama, all of this incredible intensity is brought to life vividly by Silvio Pucaretti in a production that is simply too large for any of our conventional theatres. But whereas any period that calls itself an enlightenment is an inspiring time, it's often accompanied by an endarkenment. Consider the tragic tale of Janet Horne, 
who in 1727 became the last woman to be burnt as a witch in Scotland. Dominic Hill will direct a new play from Rona Munro, based on the tragic tale of Janet Horne. It's the 80th birthday of the great Irish playwright, Brian Friel. And in collaboration with the Gate Theatre of Dublin, we are presenting a residency of three of Brian Friel's wonderful plays, Faith Healer, The Yalta Game and Afterplay, all to be performed at the King's Theatre throughout the festival. Visual arts is represented in this year's programme by a specially curated exhibition from Juliana Engberg. This intriguing exhibition sees people like Charles Darwin, Blaise Pascal, Jean-Jacques Rousseau make surprising appearances in ways that intervene, intersect, discuss and connect with all of the Enlightenment ideas that are the basis of the program of the performing arts and the whole program of the festival itself. Festivals are about ideas. And in this year, our ideas are very much grounded in Scotland and in Edinburgh itself. Its international resonance, its international place as a city of ideas, its international connections form the inspiration for our program. There are many, many delights awaiting for you in the 2009 Edinburgh International Festival. 180 events, thousands of artists, dozens of venues in an extraordinary collaboration of human creativity. There's something for everyone. I'm sure you will be inspired to make the journey to Scotland. We look forward to welcoming you to this great city, never greater than in festival time in August.